Well, so now we'll quickly move on to our next panel discussion, which is on uh, digitization, profitability, democratizing wealth, expanding beyond HNIs to mass market. So let's welcome our co-panelist here on stage. We'll have Mr. Shripal Shah, President and Chief Operating Officer, Kotak Securities. Let's welcome him here on stage, ladies and gentlemen. Mr. Atul Singhal, Founder and CEO, Scriptbox. Mr. K. Sandeep Nayak, Executive Director and CEO, Centrum Broking. And our moderator for this session, Ms. Nilufa, Consultant Fintech. Yes. Welcome, ma'am. Everyone. Thank you. I, I know it's an evening session, but nice to see so many faces. So thanks for being here. I guess we have a very great panel. Uh, I guess the topic is known to all and it's interested you, therefore you're here. Uh, goes without saying that from a wealth point of view, whether it is HNI, whether it is uh, in a mass market, our ratios in India are growing at double digit, but even then as a percentage to the entire population, much smaller. As a country, we are a you know, savings-oriented country from a mindset point of view. So the uh, only option is one way up. Is it year-on-year -year, like doubling or is it year-on-year -year quadrupling? I think that is the question today. So that's the nice space to be in uh, from a growth point of view. Uh, as a start, what I would like each of the panelists to maybe co comment upon is uh, what the segment within the wealth management piece uh, you know, attracts your company and what products within that you think uh, you know, is, the segment, is what attracts your consumer in your companies. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Nilupar. Uh, I represent Kotak Securities. Uh, we are a 25-plus-year-old uh, stockbroking firm, started with stockbroking where clients can trade into equity, commodity, currency, options, and futures. And of course, as an add-on, uh, we have all other ancillary products, which are capital market, which is IPO, mutual fund, uh, corporate bonds, NCDs, and uh, sovereign bonds, global investment. So if you look at the wealth management per se, and in literal terms, wealth management can be defined as, you know, a wealth manager is managing client's entire fund. Uh, on one extreme, that could be the wealth management, and on another extreme, the wealth management is that anybody, any investor or any person who is dealing with finances, whether it is loans, whether it is savings, or whether it is insurance, if some financial intermediary comes and help, it also is in a way indirectly helping him manage his finances and hence wealth management. So strictly speaking, Kotak Security is a stock broking firm, mutual fund distributor, and uh, IPO uh, syndicate player. But uh, in terms of products, Apart from the vanilla products, I think some of the interesting products that we have started uh, offering off late is uh, one being the uh, thematic basket uh, on our own platform that we have launched, which is called Stock It. And another one is the Sip It, which is basically you can do SIP in any particular stock. Uh, I mean, there are a lot of SIPs which are happening on mutual funds. Uh, you can buy SIP way in mutual fund, but I think here you can identify a specific stock uh, a single stock also, and you can create an SIP of any frequency that you want. Uh, so uh, that's about it in a nutshell. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Nilifa, and thanks to the audience to stick around for a late session. Uh, my name is Atul Shingal. Uh, I am the founder and CEO uh, of a company called Scriptbox. Uh, uh, we bring the power of digital uh, to, a, to the space of wealth management. And I'll segregate the two words and I'll talk about our customer segments. So digital is actually a way of life. It's not online. A lot of people confuse online and digital. Uh, online is just a channel. Uh, so with due respect, I compare Amazon and Big Bazaar online. Amazon is digital and Big Bazaar online is just a channel. Uh, we are the digital play. Uh, it's math, science, data, uh, automation, uh, sort of uh, obviously online technology, all rolled into one to make it better, faster, cheaper for our customers. Right? That's the power of digital which we bring to wealth management. Wealth management in our perspective is basically making sure that our customers sleep easy at night so that you get financial freedom, whether it's with 20 lakhs, uh, <coughs> two crores or 20 crores. Is that money managed well? Will your children go to college? Uh, will you retire and sleep easy? Uh, we are not about the best returns. So unlike a lot of people talk about investment returns and optimizing. So there's that old Maruti ad which says, Kitna deti hai. 
right? We, have, we say kafi deti hai is the, is the right answer for us. And sorry for lapsing into Hindi. But for us, wealth management is basically understanding a customer, creating portfolios which more meet those requirements. Now to do that, we obviously have different portfolios, different products, whether that's mutual funds, whether that's stock, sovereign gold bonds. So manufacturers uh, are our providers and we basically curate that and provide to our customers. Today, because of the power of digital, we are able to profitably serve customers from 50,000 rupees to 500 crores. So we manage about 17,000 crores of assets today. Uh, we are probably amongst the top five or top 10 in the country. Uh, and we have the unique ability to actually serve profitably uh, and happily so a customer who gives us 50,000 rupees to manage to 500 crores, obviously different levels of service. So that's what we are uh, in, in essentially making people sleep easy at night. And that's what you want to try to do. Hi, I'm uh, Sandeep Nayak. I am the CEO of uh, uh, Centrum Broking. Uh, if you look at us as a firm, we are the traditional brokers, uh, started uh, in the early 2000s, mid 2000s, and uh, a, a very high quality uh, research outfit uh, focused on uh, HNIs. And what has enabled us to get into the mass market is what is the topic is about. How, how has uh, wealth management got democratized? If you just go back a little bit into history, the first moment of democratization happened when we moved from the outcry system to the uh, computer-based system or a screen-based trading. That is what allowed really the, for the uh, market to expand. That was the first change that, that really uh, started a revolution. Then came uh, computer, to com computer to computer links, followed by uh, VSATs, uh, those further expanded geographies. Then the web trading started around the 2000s, uh, early 2000s. The web trading was another moment where uh, products started to go to the mass market. Uh, you had you, what, not really digital, but the online uh, brokings and online uh, wealth management started. But the real, real moment where the whole revolution began is when uh, the smartphone revolution happened in India and what the government did on India stack where it became easy to open a customer KYC within five minutes. That is when you saw the explosion and typically, uh, or rather it coincided with, with COVID and you suddenly saw the explosion and that was the reason uh, that was possible because of smartphone revolution with India, India stack available and all technology players and fintechs coming in with the right product at the right time. So we as uh, Centrum Broking are actually now metamorphosing into Centrum Finverse where from just broking we want to cover the entire financial universe and taking everything digital making it simple UI UX based for the customer. The house already has uh, expertise in dealing with HNIs, has expertise in dealing with institutions. Now, how to use technology? What is the opportunity? Using technology and break, making it available to every customer, every retail customer with products that he can consume easily. And that's the objective with which we have started Finverse. And we really aim to democratize uh, how financial products are bought, not just by giving them ideas or sending a 40-page research report. It has to be bucketed well. It has to be in a, curated in a manner where it can be consumed easily. Today, if I tell you India is growing and uh, there, there is, it is India's decade, uh, maybe it's India's century as per the McKinsey uh, CEO, but how does one consume products? There, is, there are various stories. There is an India CapEx story. There is an India preventive health. People are moving from uh, ignoring their health to getting into preventive health. So how do you play the India diagnostic story? Or there are roads being constructed all over the country. How do you play that? Now, the retail investor doesn't know which script to buy to play this or which mutual fund to buy, or mutual fund to invest in to get this benefit. We are trying to make it simple for him that he has a basket. If he says he likes that uh, Nitin Gadkari is constructing roads, and I know in the next five years, roads is a good story, I want to buy it. 
this is the basket you have to buy. It will have a combination of mutual funds as well as stocks. Or let's say he says that uh, the, uh, there is a huge mass of people coming into the uh, working group and there, there is a health consciousness in all of them and they will do these diagnostic tests and get into a preventive health. So which is the basket of stocks or mutual funds to buy? Or let's imagine that China was at, last year we were at 20, 22 PE and China was at 15. Today China is at 9 and we are at 20. So will there be a revival of China? If he thinks there's a revival of China, he has a basket of uh, mutual funds to buy. Or supposing he thinks there is a return of Japan as an investment class. Last year Japan gave 30% return. But he wouldn't know what to buy, so there will be a basket available for him. That will really democratize, rather than understand what script you're buying, you know the theme and that's easy for a person to relate to and that's what we hope to bring in. I feel that is the next wave of explosion that can be created in this space, in the wealth management space. So Sandeep, taking a leaf from what you just said, so will this be available only for HNIs or what kind of a ticket size customer no, can actually start thinking? Technology has made, see, if it is an HNI, he has to be serviced by a relationship manager, a, a private banker or relationship manager. But technology has enabled us to take this to a retail investor. So you don't need a person to, you have to have a, a, a proper digital interface where the customer can see what is available and it should be a single click for him to buy what he wants to. And that is, that is the real opportunity as well as the challenge for us. And if you're able to do that, I think uh, we would have uh, uh, a fair share of the cake that is available. Makes sense. I think I'm just going to move a little saying from, uh, especially if you have to make it more mass market, uh, it has to be more sachet size. So you know, how, how do you think, in, you know, both from a manufacturing point of view, and while digital is an option for uh, distribution, are there any thoughts on uh, how will the wealth piece become more and more sachet, SIP being one large thing in India rather than one-time investments, but anything else in your mind which is coming up in the sachet category? I'll give you a perspective, right? So this goes back actually many years uh, when we launched Scriptbox. Uh, we were targeting what we said early savers. The rationale was that uh, if you have to create long-term wealth, you have to be in equity. Uh, if you have to be in equity, uh, you just don't have the wherewithal to buy direct equity. So you have to be in equity mutual funds. If you have to be in equity mutual funds, how do you select? Right? At that time when we did the research, there were 850 equity schemes without all these subcategories. If a, if a man is going to, or a man or woman or person is going to invest 10,000, 20,000 rupees, I don't know what you mean by sachet, but uh, uh, assume that that is a ticket size. How do you decide mint top 50, BSE 500? So we said, if we did our research, we found that four funds were sufficient diversification uh, to give them that uh, balance. So we launched Scriptbox, and I'm sure the industry laughed at us with only four funds on our platform. We had nothing else available. You could only buy those four funds and that two together to create that basket of 20,000 rupees, 5,000 in each, and you just created that SIP and you rebalanced it. So that was a sachet solution in classical portfolio management, giving you diversification, giving you exposure to the markets and actively monitored. So that's an example of how you can create, take classical wealth management, make it very simple to understand, and then you're just focused on how much you want to save, right? So that's the kind of solutions you can come up with. And we continue to do that now. So today we create, curate portfolios for people at one lakh of investment, two lakhs of investment. And depending on the goal, right? If you want to save up for your children's education, uh, it's a very different basket as compared to somebody saving up for retirement or, and the time frame, right? So while I really liked what Sandeep said about themes, uh, we take a slightly different view about themes. We take a customer-centric view in the sense that the customer is actually trying to solve a problem. Like a home loan example you were talking about. People are not taking a home loan because they want the loan. They're interested in the house, right? So tom toming the home loan interest is the wrong thing. The ability to affordability is much more important. Similarly, the, the way to, set, to make it uh, understandable and consumable, you have to align it to what they're really trying to solve for. Right? Unfortunately, everybody is chasing returns, but if you distill the problem, they're essentially trying to figure out Will I, will I sleep easy at night again? So that's, you can just relate the sashes along according to that. I'll just add on Sachetizen. There are two perspectives I have on Sachetizen. One is on the uh, proper wealth management where it is portfolio management, where currently regulation, it says minimum 50 lakh uh, worth of AUM is required for a client to give a portfolio to a particular portfolio manager. Where I think regulators also realize that now if they were to 
go to the mass market, uh, the limit has to go down. And somewhere they are thinking about some category of advisor or PMS or a robo-advisory platform where they are looking at somewhere around 5 lakh kind of a ticket size where one can give 5 lakh and get entire portfolio uh, managed through the help of uh, AI-enabled robo-advisory. So that is one situation which is happening which will of course uh, you know, uh, distribute the wealth management solution to the mass market. And second one is per product, even today in mutual fund also, it has reached to a level where one can do 500 rupees SIP. Uh, that also being talk about that it might become 250 rupees. So I think both ways, if a customer wants a particular product, the statute knows that is happening. And if a customer wants entire portfolio to be managed by a portfolio manager or advisor, they're also SEBI is thinking about, you know, statutizing to a level where it is affordable to a mass market. So I think it brings to the next point naturally saying as we sanitize and as we become more digital, uh, both from a profitability point of view plus digital also comes with its own set of fraud, you know, cyber security and therefore the investment in that side especially as distributors more than the manufacturers. So a question on both sides saying how does profitability get impacted as it becomes more mass market? And secondly, how do costs go up, uh, you know, to just remain, I mean, from a customer point of view, ensure there is protection and no cyber security threat and many other threats today? Uh, so there are two parts to the answer. Uh, building is expensive, maintaining is cheap, right? Uh, so while there's a large amount of investment and why, that's why we are VC funded, uh, to create the platforms, to create the architecture, to create the solutions, running it is very cheap. Right, so our service, like I said, the reason we can serve a 50,000 rupee customer uh, profitably is there's the, the relative cost to serve is very, very low. And today technology is evolving so fast that, uh, I mean, I think we get an email every day that we can manage your cybersecurity, we can do that. So I, I don't think uh, that's a, an overarching cost. The largest cost in building a solid digital technology platform, lead platform, is the build cost. Uh, the initial cost of engineers, and especially sitting in Bangalore. Uh, it's I can a, relate to that. <laughs> uh, it, it's an expensive thing to do. But once you build it, uh, we can process uh, a million customers on a platform, right? So that's the advantage. No, my, my, a little bit, uh, uh, my take on this, actually the uh, cost of building a platform, et cetera, is of course there, but that is not really what kills uh, uh, startups. What is really the most... Uh, killing cost is what is known as CAC, cost of acquisition. Now that can be killing. If you have to do digital advertising on your own, do campaigns and build customers, the cost of acquisition can be anywhere from 1,000 to 10,000 rupees depending on what campaign you're doing where and how successful your campaign is. So the CAC is the killing uh, when you reach mass, mass market. That's why we have looked at it differently. How do we uh, ride on partnerships? For example, we run a bank. We run a bank called Unity Small Finance Bank, has about uh, one and a half million customers. They need a three-in-one. So we are offering a three-in-one to them, where uh, along with the bank account, you get a broking and a DMAT account. And technology has made it so simple that it can be done in five minutes. It's not that you have uh, 70, 80 signatures uh, and uh, a whole list of uh, documents to be collected uh, with DigiLocker and uh, the uh, ease of uh, doing business that has got created, opening an account is no longer a challenge, which at one point used to be the challenge. If, if I remember, well, I, I used to uh, be part of a very successful uh, broking firm, Kotak Securities, myself. And the joke used to be, it's easier to make money in the market than open an account in Kotak. I don't know, Shripal, whether you remember this. That's what the challenge used to be. I mean, the people used to tell us it's easier to make money in the market, boss, than open an account. That is gone away. So you can reach the masses, but the CAC is the uh, problem. So you have to ride on partnerships and multiple partnerships. And one of the reasons I am here uh, uh, not only after the panel, I'd like to stand here or stay here uh, till the night and see what can we partner, who we can we partner with, because there is already a startup which is incurring CAC and offering services. Uh, investment services can come from our, our end, and if we partner, we can share the spoils. So, in terms of growing, 
without burning money, the best way is to align with banks, align with other wealth managers, empower financial advisors, give them, uh, give them the tool. For example, we have uh, a, a tech team which has worked on two uh, models. If you want the entire product as a platform, we will give it to you. If you want APIs and you want to develop your own front end, we'll give you the APIs. So get into partnerships and grow the business without incurring that killing cack. I think that is the most important challenge for all startups and fintechs. I, I like the word killing cack, so <laughs> maybe we should find a solution to that collectively. So I think it's, we have a compressed time, so what I try to do is open up for questions. Uh, we've got around 10 to 15 minutes for questions. Uh, you have a very esteemed panel here to pick, your, pick brains both on distribution and manufacturing. Uh, so happy to take some questions. Question is: Is account aggregator is the idea for that? Actually, where a lot of that that's a DPI, right? Government uh, is uh, uh, giving that kind of a platform available. So, is it that with account aggregators and well tech com combined can help even the public sector bank like entities to come to the new age? And do you see that is one benefit? Link question to you. You mentioned about you know like uh, the you know like uh, cost of building platform is tough, but then running it easy with with the part. Uh, you know, any of the digital public infrastructure DPI, you see ONDC-like thing is, is coming up and useful for that. So, yeah, I mean... See, it. account aggregator, your first question was on account aggregator. Account aggregator is again an enabler. It makes life easier. I mean, instead of asking the customer, for example, if you're opening an account for uh, uh, broking or wealth management or bank, uh, your KYC can come from DigiLocker, your uh, Aadhaar, your PAN, etc. details can come from DigiLocker. But certain places, like if you want to do FNO trading, you have to have uh, six months bank statements, you, or you need to have the net worth. I think account aggregator will provide that on a platform. And it makes it easier for the customer because when you're uh, opening an account and transacting with a, uh, a financial service provider, uh, obviously there are uh, payments to and fro and you need to map your bank account. Now an account aggregator service will allow, enable the customer to, uh, it will enlist all his bank accounts and he can pick uh, which bank account he wants to map here because somebody wants to track investments through another bank, expenses through another bank, one card for uh, uh, fuel expenses, one card for medical expenses, people can have their choices. And uh, account aggregator services will make it simple. But account aggregator may not help in, uh, it's not that there is a huge database available to uh, attack. You will only be, and it is a, it's a pull with the permission of the client and a cost per pull. So it is not available, uh, uh, it's not a free-for-all that uh, account aggregator service has co consolidated the assets of an individual and I can access it, no. But it does make life simple. Account opening instead of five minutes will probably come four minutes. That, that can be the change. <laughs> In terms of, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, 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 the public infrastructure always helps. Uh, whether it's KYC, which is a problem we are trying to solve, whether it is uh, people, things like MFU, which have made trading much easier. ONTC is still very, very infancy in its stage for somebody like us, right? Because we are not a transaction platform. So we're not saying that you can buy one more mutual fund. We're going to curate the solution for you. Our expensive are, uh, expenses are in the customer journeys, right? Like he's talked about the smartphone revolution. While it did create the revolution, it also made it very complex because uh, you're essentially dealing with the only real estate we own is this, right? The only way I can interact with you is this little screen. So it's got to be intuitive, it's got to be smart. And that's what costs money. And, and also, I mean, I come from, we started building this in 2012. Uh, there was no uh, public stack. So it's, it's, it's that, we're taking advantage of that. But technology, uh, technologies are expensive. Uh, a good engineer uh, is just expensive. That's the reality. Just to add to that, uh, in terms of maintaining also, for uh, someone like us in stockbroking, nowadays there is a heavy demand from regulatory side in terms of technology upkeeping. You need to have high availability uh, and backup of each and every service that you have. You are supposed to have disaster recovery site. Even there is a five-minute technical glitch on your platform, you are supposed to report to 
regulator. So that way even upkeeping and maintenance of platforms, uh, Atul is also becoming now more and more demanding. Luckily, we're not as regulated as you, so we're all right mm -hmm. on the distribution side. But yeah, Indiva. Yeah, question to all of you. First to Atul. Um, what are your best practices in uh, making the journey intuitive for customers, especially on the KYC, account opening, subscription, redemption, and most importantly, transmission? Uh, I think the best practice is just listening. Yeah, I think we just we, we do a lot of trials with our customers. Uh, we make wireframes, go out there, let customers test it out. Uh, it's, it should work for them. Uh, and uh, yeah, and we then digitize that. So we basically, today technology exists that you can see customers, how their eyes are moving, how their eyeballs are moving, which part of the screen they're touching first, uh, how intuitively do they, go to, do, do they go to the next screen, when do they get back. So once you're able to incorporate all of that into the intuition of the, of the customer, uh, you're able to solve for it. Uh, are we there yet? Uh, not completely. Uh, regulations also change, and, and, and that keeps you on the toes. Uh, in terms of transmission especially, we have not cracked the puzzle. I think uh, partly because of technology, partly because of emotion. Uh, transmission uh, for clarity is, uh, if God forbid somebody passes away, uh, how does the account move to the, to the nominee or how does that ma happen, right? So that's still a complex process for various reasons. Uh, we're working on that and I'm definitely going to reach out to experts like uh, Indivar, who comes from CAMS, uh, to see how we can do that. But in terms of best practices, if you are building something in digital, uh, the only answer lies with the customer. Uh, and the feedback is instantaneous, right? Uh, because as they start pressing buttons, you'll see what they're using, what they're not using, and that you keep incorporating uh, into your revised journeys. One question. You know, I agree with uh, uh, Atul that it is, it is an iterative process. I mean, uh, what you think is the best product uh, may not be perceived as the best by the customer. And uh, when the customer uses it, obviously he'll give you feedback. I mean, uh, obviously the UI UX is, is the best, is demanded by the customer and as long as you make it easy for him in terms of uh, the least number of clicks to the destination, whether he's buying a mutual fund or a stock, what are the least number of clicks can you, can you give him to get to where he wants to? And that is a complete evolution. It, it's an it's a evolving process and I myself have been see, seeing our own app, uh, every time I see it, uh, I feel this requires 10 more changes. Every time I see it, 10 more changes, 10 more changes. So it is a continuous process and you talk to customers, they will tell you, why have you kept this button here? Why are you using a, a, a modify? You could, it should have been a buy or a sell. And you learn. And it, it, is, it is a never-ending process. And that will have to be done all the time. Uh, one question here. And this was basically, like, we are talking of expanding beyond HNIs to mass market. What happens with uh, most such individuals is the awareness about their own wealth is still missing. So there's one statement that's issued by NSDL or CDSL called the Consolidated Account Statement, CAS Statement. Uh, one thing is that, again, that comes to people's emails, but most people don't end up checking that. Uh, so what could be done on top of that, or just making that awareness more within individuals so that they have a consolidated view of the wealth? That is on one side. Uh, that was my first question. And the second question was, since all of you come from the capital markets, uh, one thing that is yet to be seen is, lending against securities. Like that process is not seamless. Surprisingly, uh, it's easier to get an unsecured loan with a, with a secured loan, like a loan against securities. Uh, so just thoughts on these two. I'll try. So the second question first, uh, I think that the digitization is happening very rapidly in that. Uh, there are at least 10 providers who are doing this quite systematically. Uh, it's now five minutes dispersal. Uh, you get a lien on the mutual fund. People like CAMS will market, uh, it's all, it's reasonably digital, the process. It's getting better. Uh, we at Scriptbox have Mireille as our partner. Uh, it, it works seamlessly. Uh, in terms of the R1, I think that's now a pretty standard process. Uh, the ECAS is uh, more uh, understood than the, the consolidated statement, CDSL statement. Uh, but that's been digitized completely. So again, without sounding like a sales guy from Scriptbox, uh, it's, a, it's a seamless process. We'll send you an email, you'll send an email back. Uh, we don't, by for privacy concerns, read emails. Uh, we you, we need, we'll force you to send the email to us. And from there, it's seamless. The moment the email comes into our inbox, 
uh, we'll open it uh, with your consent, we'll uh, upload it. See, the power is not only in the consolidation, it's your ability to understand that consolidation, right? If you look at the CDSL statement, there are so many numbers and uh, units, you really don't understand. So the visualization of that, that how much is in equity, how much is in fixed income, how much is liquid, how much is not liquid, what is it doing, that's more important to the customer. Uh, and so today technology allows you to ingest that EK statement, visualize it, analyze it, and provide insights. And you can do all this in five minutes. So all these solutions exist. I mean, all of us do it in the, in the fintech world, if you can call it that. Uh, so yeah, and my only answer as always a good sales guy, please log on to Scriptbox. Just to no, add I'll to that, uh, sorry, good, good, good. Yeah. Uh, apart from the mutual fund aggregation, as uh, Tul mentioned, I think, uh, I mean, the question is more about how do you aggregate entire wealth which is uh, lying in the form of whether mutual fund, equity, or even uh, bank. Uh, and that is where I think account aggregator framework will come into play. And uh, 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 I am not very sure somebody can answer on that, but apparently uh, the uh, NSDL, CDSL, et cetera, if they have become the financial information provided to this uh, framework, and which I think is on the way. Uh, and uh, as an as a intermediary, I think we can allow client to aggregate everything on one platform through that framework. So that is sometime in the corner. See, sure. yeah. it's, it's around the corner, yeah. yeah. One more point I'd like to add to what Atul and uh, Shripal said. One of the important things to realize is this CAS goes out in one language, English. Okay, and a uh, lot of people are not comfortable with English. So in fact, CDSL has now started uh, sending it out in, uh, I think about, uh, I think some seven, eight or nine different languages. That helps uh, people then open it and understand it uh, easier because it is in a language that they can understand and you can choose the language, whether you want it in uh, Gujarati or you want it in uh, Hindi or you want it in uh, any other language, Kannada, whatever. That is one. Second, uh, behaviorally, our parents or the senior generation actually were investing in uh, gold, real estate, and uh, uh, probably uh, Indra, Vikas, Pratra, all that. And the habit was not there in parents to check the cash. So it doesn't come easily to the children. Now it is coming. I mean, now if you see, the new generation is happy to straight go to FNO. Despite the disclaimer, like uh, a cigarette packet has a warning that it is dangerous to your health, SEBI has it made it mandatory that when a customer logs in, he's told that 90% of the customers have made losses in FNO and you will also make loss. He says, okay, fine, and then goes ahead and does the transaction. So uh, those habits are changing, so people will. And sometimes what happens for people is, uh, the wealth is not sizable, sizable enough to open that mail. Once that becomes sizable, they will open, and these habits will keep changing. And I think this, this is another perspective that I just wanted to add. And uh, if we are able to get a, a translator program where they send it in English and you say, I want to translate this into Telugu, uh, that app, somebody is working on it, and once that comes, uh, everybody will open the CAS. So I think we had a rapid fire session and we have a short period, but thanks for an engaging conversation both from the panelists and from uh, the entire set of people. I'm sure we are around, so if you want to pick our brains on anything specifically, we can do that one-on-one. -on -one. Thank you. Thank you for the audience. Thank you. Thank you so much, everyone.